Here is a 2024 BMW M440i convertible in Arctic race blue over Oyster Vanesca leather. This is M performance, but not full blown M, in which you're getting quick zero to 60s, you get a twin scrolled turbocharged inline six, same engine options as a three series, but converted into a two door. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. We get a light LCI, the enlarged four series kidney grill with the gloss black elements. It's an active grill shutter. It works its way into the shadow line LED headlights and daytime runnings with the gloss black elements that's on the lower. You're getting around 4.5 inches of clearance. Competition, Mercedes, Audi, Genesis, because this is a convertible, it's gonna be a few tenths of a second slower, but packed underneath the hood is a BMW inline six cylinder twin scroll turbocharged producing 382 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque, paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. Reaching 60 BMW is quoting at five seconds with the top speed at 130 miles per hour. We have a staggered wheel setup, so you can get 155 miles per hour, 19 inch, five double spoke, jet gloss black alloy wheels. M Sport Pro package adds the red calipers. Four pistons are housed in the front. Six pistons will go into the M. When you go into the M competition, it also increases horsepower and torque, but you're not going to achieve 23 MPGs for the city and 31 MPGs for the high and this has a better weight distribution, 50.5, 49.5, which outdoes the Germans and the Genesis. Because it's a convertible, I like to keep the top down because I'm in the state of Florida. It's hot, just use the air condition. When it's cold, use the neck warmers because we have both. Gloss black elements for the side view mirrors. The lower rocker is not going to be as aggressive as a full M and I wouldn't expect that for an M440i. This is kind of the understated vehicle, similar to like an Audi S4. People don't assume they're fast, but they are. And that's what you have right here. LED tail lights, no trunk lip spoiler, but the rear gets a little bit more aggressive with the side vents reflectors that's going to be above the dual exhaust outlets and you get the gloss black elements front and rear parking sensors because we have the professional package that includes the 360 degree reverse camera and 3d camera with a quick release 12 cubic feet of storage with the top up you're going to lose top to bottom you get storage here on the side but with the top down you have a full open and you can fold the rear bench completely down and that will increase the cargo so you can fit maybe a 32 inch TV and you can do it from the back. This is a twin scroll turbocharged. We need to go inside, start up this inline six so you can hear that exhaust note. A new dash has been implemented with the iX screen. 14 way power seat adjustment for the driver, heated, ventilated with the head warmers. 12 way power seat adjustment for the passenger, memory for the driver. Driver focus with the aluminum inlays that goes underneath the curve one panel BMW with touch screen. Navigation, Apple CarPlay that's wireless, Android Auto. Sirius XM AM FM streaming Bluetooth audio 5G Wi-Fi connections throw it into reverse we have a 360 degree reverse camera full trajectory with backup assist and 3D view which means you can use the iDrive mouse to go all around it or the touch sensitive or gesture control the same thing for the car wash you'll have trajectory for the front working down to the reworked air vents you get the aluminum inlays that open up to a wireless charging pad, USB 12 volt, and the key fob for the M440i. I like how they carry on with the aluminum that goes around everything. The iDrive mouse is also touch sensitive. It's gonna be soft where you put your arms open up inside. It's a pretty wide storage pocket, just not so deep with the USB. Leather wrap, three spoke steering wheel, heated multi-function. And the gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver. The center will be different content that you can adjust. 
and then you have different layout in which you can also do the same thing whenever you're changing your driver mode select. The heads up display also has different configurations to change. It is a large heads up display that is a little bit more difficult to see with polarized glasses. The door panels start with the Harman Kardon. It's gonna be more of your everyday materials pretty much found on the top, but it's soft where it needs to be, one touch up and down for all the windows. Medium sized storage pocket with the beverage holder carved out. Going into the back, it's a little simple. It will adjust electronically. For the back seats with the top up, it's still actually doable. My head is on the headliner. Leg space is going to be tight if I'm driving, but I can still kind of fit. Just I won't be feeling the air so much because I'm blocking the air vents and the controls for the third climate. Cup holders in the center. I kind of wish that it had a little bit more than that. You can fold this down, which is a pass through. It's not going to be very beneficial because my legs are bulged out. The storage here, I'm not going to be able to reach it, but I can leave my phone in there. And I have somewhat of an armrest here, which because I'm tall, I'd probably place it here. 382 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. We have it in Sport Plus, so we could see the dynamics underneath this. M suspension, M rear differential. Here we go. Puts a smile on your face. I got the top down, so I am enjoying the hotter day, but the air condition is blowing on me pretty good. 50.5, 49.5 weight distribution, which is awesome because you're at around $77,000. You're getting a lot of performance. Look at this thing. That inline six twin scroll turbo is just ready to rock and roll. It has a good exhaust note. It doesn't filter in all the time unless you're hitting a higher RPM, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. And with the top down, it's not that noisy either. As you're noticing, the wind for the aerodynamic layout, you don't have your hair blowing every which way. And I got the windows down too. Obviously in the back seats, it's not going to be the most desirable because you're going to feel a lot more than you do in the front. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, it's a sweet spot because you are getting good performance. You're not in the inline four cylinder twin scrolled turbocharge. You go into a inline six. So it's a justification for the price. You get a pretty big bump going from a 430 to an M440. You're also getting the brakes. You can add the M Sport package to a 430, but it's still not going to pack the same performance numbers or the weight distribution. And the MPGs is still doable. So unless you're really wanting to go around 100,000 for a full M, which I would recommend the competition because you're getting 30 more horsepower, you're getting good MPGs and you're getting fast enough zero to 60s. This is a convertible. So around five seconds, that's what BMW is quoting. That's pretty good. Now, I don't usually like to drive the vehicles putting the tops up, but I do it just so that way you can actually see that you can physically still drive the vehicle up to 20, 30 miles per hour with putting the top up or down. So if you need to do it on a pinch, you can do so or just simply pull off on the side of the road. Does it become more quiet? I don't hear hardly anything on the exterior. Now, when you go to the full M, it will be a little bit more agile. You're gonna feel more of the ride. It feels a little bit lower, even though it's not. It's just the suspension is a little bit more track tuned. This is kind of an everyday, plus some performance if you're running late to work, or if you need to get the kids to school quick, you can still do that and you're not sacrificing luxury because these seats are very comfortable. We're gonna throw it back into sport mode. That way we can see how she comes. And here we go. I mean, you're catching a speed ticket quicker than you would think. Going to some cons about the vehicle, we got a light LCI in the front with this BMW curved screen, which I call it the IX, because that's where it was derived from. And we're getting a rocker. I'm not a huge fan of the rocker, but it does open up real estate in the interior. It feels a lot more wide for the front. Back seat is doable, but it's very 
tight. I like how the seats will adjust so it will not crush you completely. It'll actually come to a stop. But I dislike that you still have to go into the cargo to pull that little tray out to put the top down. When you're doing any LCI, you want to do improvements. These improvements are good, but that would be great. I like that we have a physical knob to turn on and off the stereo system because if you're not tech savvy at the beginning, this iDrive 8 system can be a little bit overwhelming. There is a lot of functions and a lot of different applications in which can tailor to your everyday use or for your performance use. The air vents are not so sleek, so I like that they're big enough because when you get into the BMW X5, they made them smaller in the center. Here, even though it's reworked, it's still about the same size as the prior in which you feel air circulate all over you. Another con, sitting in the back, I'm blocking the air vents because of my height. Really, somebody around five foot five or less is acceptable in the back anything over six foot it's basically to take you to a quick party this will have more horsepower than the audi s5 cabriolet and it's going to be right at the same speeds zero to 60. same torque it's going to have more horsepower and torque than the g70 genesis 3.3 turbo the new amg c43 has a lot underneath the hood i've done a few reviews on them it's a pretty impressive engine but it's not so much quicker than what bmw is stating for the zero to 60 times in this in which this is a convertible the convertible variant is not going to be coming out for a few more months in which you're getting a carryover if you get it now when you're at this price you are going to start justifying things. Should I increase another few thousand and go M4? But then, should I increase a few more thousand to get the competition? And then features, and this and this and this. Whenever I bought my personal vehicle, that was some of the problems I was going into. Because when you're at $70,000, there's a lot of vehicle choices. This is one of the best choices in the sense of what you're getting performance in underneath the hood, and it's a convertible, so like I said, ticks my box. But when you're at these numbers, you're so close to the M4 that it's like, should I just, go to the M4, maybe not get every feature and just add the competition because it's only a few thousand dollars to do that. Because when you're considering sweet spot for the M line, the M4 competition knocks it out of the park because the M8 competition is going to be 50 to $70,000 more and you're getting near the same performance numbers at a variant that inexpensive. So now when you put that into the equation, what you have here is a sweet spot because you can tweak the engine and get a lot more performance out of it. But we also have to remember these are the same power trains that are in the 3 Series. So if you want a four-door, you have that option where you go coupe slash convertible and you got that box tick. We're going to throw it into sport mode. Turn radius at a stop point, more or less, is going to get about a lane and a half. And look at she... <laughs> It filters in nice. It's not track derived, but it could be if you want to tweak the performance numbers yourself. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 BMW M440i convertible for our car review.